Here we're going to revisit an object which we've looked at in previous videos that is the matrix exponential. So if you recall, we had the Taylor expansion for the function e to the x, so where x is a real variable, is equal to the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. And so this is actually maybe an appropriate definition for e to the x, in fact. So instead of thinking about e to the x as the fancy number e raised to the x power, we can think of, think of it as this power sum. And thinking of it as this power sum means that we could evaluate things that are not numbers by this exponential function or with this exponential function. And this actually gives us some motivation for applying all sorts of functions to things that are not numbers. So in this video, we'll look at applying this function to matrices. So let's just recall, given an n by n matrix, x, so that's capital X, we can define the matrix exponential, so that's e to the x, as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial x to the n, where this is the nth power of the matrix x. And you might say, well, do normal exponent rules work with matrix exponentiation? And in fact, not quite. So they kind of work, but only in special cases. And so in particular today, we will prove that if AB equals BA, so in other words, we have commuting matrices, then E to the A times E to the B is equal to E to the A plus B. So of course, this equality right here is true for all numbers A and B, but as we'll see, that relies on the fact that multiplication of numbers is commutative. Okay, so let's maybe do this calculation, and after we've achieved this result, we'll look at an example where this equality does not hold. Okay, so let's take our e to the a times e to the b and expand each of those. So this will be the sum as k goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 over k factorial a to the k. So that's the kth power of the matrix A. And then we'll have that's multiplied by the sum as L goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over L factorial times B to the L. So that's the Lth power of the matrix B. Now we need to multiply these two infinite series, and we'll do that with something called the Cauchy product formula for infinite series. So let's see what we have. That's going to give us the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, and then inside of that we'll have the sum as m goes from 0 to n, and then we'll have the nth term of this sum. So that'll give us 1 over m factorial a to the m, and that needs to be multiplied by the n minus mth term of that other one. So that'll be 1 over n minus m factorial b to the n minus m. Okay, so now we've got a double sum. The inside sum is finite. Okay, so from here what I want to do is multiply by the number 1, and I'll multiply by the number 1 in the form of 1 over n factorial times n factorial. Good. And now let's start putting things together. So this is going to be the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of the sum as m goes from 0 up to n. And now let's notice that we can put all of these numbers together here. So we have n factorial, m factorial, and n minus m factorial. And let's recall that the binomial coefficient n choose m is exactly equal to that. So n factorial over m factorial, n minus m factorial. So instead of writing this as we have it on the right hand side, we'll write it as this binomial coefficient. So we'll have n choose m. I still have this 1 over n factorial out front. And then I have a to the m, b to the n minus m. But if we look on the inside here, 
in particular at this sum, that looks like a binomial expansion. But this is only a binomial expansion when AB equals BA. Maybe we'll look at a quick example of why that's not the case if we do not have commutativity um, after we do this calculation. So this is going to be the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial A plus B to the n where that a plus b to the n, maybe let's put that in purple parentheses, expands to this other thing that we have in pur purple parentheses when a equals b. And let's notice that that is exactly e to the a plus b using this definition over here. So notice that we've started with e to the a times e to the b, and we've ended with e to the a plus b, and at this point in the calculation, we use the fact that a, b equals b, a. Okay, well, let's really highlight how we use that fact by looking at a special term from this sum. Let's maybe look at the n equals 2 term. So that will have something like a plus b squared, which is a plus b times a plus b. So notice we get a times a, which is a squared, and then we'll have plus ab plus ba plus b squared. So really we should write it like that first with matrices because we don't always have commutativity. But in this special case, we do have commutativity, so we can commute this ba to ab and then combine them. And that gives us the binomial coefficients 1, 2, 1, which corresponds to, like I said, the n equals 2 case. Okay, so just to reiterate, this fact that when you do an expansion of a sum of matrices, you get these kind of differently commuted objects are the reason why we need this commutativity condition up here in order for this product to be equal. Okay, good. So let's maybe get rid of this board and we'll do a sample concrete calculation when this fails. Now we're going to do an example of when e to the a times e to the b is not equal to e to the a plus b. And of course, we'll need this condition that a b is not equal to b a here because of what we just proved. Okay, so we're going to do a typical kind of math thing, and that is to look for the simplest case when something like this occurs. So I'm going to take A to be a 2 by 2 matrix, 0, 1, 0, 0. And then let's note that means that A squared is the 0 matrix. So we can see that just by doing typical matrix multiplication. But if A squared is the zero matrix, then so is A cubed and A to the fourth and so on and so forth. But that means that our infinite sum over here collapses just to the zeroth term and the first term. So we have E to the A is the identity, which is the zeroth term, plus A to the first power over one factorial, which is the first term. And then, like I said, the squared, the third power, the fourth power, all of those are zero. So in this case, this will be the matrix one, one, zero, one. So that's what we get for e to the a. Okay, and then similarly, let's define b as zero, zero, one, zero. And notice that b squared is also equal to the zero matrix here. And then via a very similar calculation, we get e to the b is equal to 1, 1, 1, 0. Now let's calculate e to the a plus b as well as e to the a times e to the b. Maybe we'll do e to the a times e to the b first just because that's the easiest one to calculate. So that's going to give us, let's see, 1, 1, 0, 1 times 1, 1, 1, 0. So doing our typical matrix multiplication, we'll get 2 for this first entry, and then 1 for the next two entries, and then 0 for the last entry. So we have something that looks like that. So that's e to the a times e to the b. But now let's explore e to the a plus b. And, but in order to do that, we need to look at the, ma the matrix a plus b as well as its powers. So a plus b is 0, 1, 1, 0. And then notice that a plus b quantity squared is in fact the identity matrix. So that's pretty easy to check just by doing matrix multiplication. 
But then that means that a plus b to the odd is always equal to a plus b, whereas a plus b to an even power is always equal to the identity matrix. So that comes from these two rules right here. Okay, that allows us to calculate e to the a plus b pretty easily. So e to the a plus b, we can split up into even and odd parts. So let's first split it up into the even part. So we'll have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, 1 over 2n factorial, like I said, the even part. And then we'll have a to an even power, but that's always the identity matrix. So we get something like that. Okay, nice. And then we have the odd parts. So that'll be the sum as n goes from 0 up to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial times our matrix A plus B, which is this matrix over here. Okay, so now putting that into terms of a matrix with sums in all of the spots, that's going to give us this sum of all of the even reciprocals of factorials in the diagonal and all the odds in the off diagonal. So here we have the sum 1 over 2n factorial, the sum 1 over 2n factorial here as well, and then the sum 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial on the off diagonal, 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. So immediately we can see that these are not equal. And that was really the goal was to show that they were not equal. That's because we have e to the a times e to the b has zero right here. Whereas this term right here, which is e to the a plus b is definitely not equal to zero. But in fact, using kind of summation techniques for series, we can get a closed form for this. And this is in fact one half e plus 1 over e on the diagonal, and e minus 1 over e on the off diagonal. So e minus 1 over e. Or you could write them in terms of hyperbolic cosines and hyperbolic sines if you wanted to do that. But notice that none of the entries here are equal to any of the entries here once we've written it in this closed form. So I guess maybe the major takeaway here is that this is not equal to e to the a plus b. So in other words, we really did need commutativity within this proof. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.